Welcome to our lecture online and you may have been wondering why in the previous couple of videos we're trying to convert linear momentum of a bullet into angular momentum and now here is why we did that. In this example we have a bullet streaming along at 300 meters per second, the mass of the bullet is 20 grams and it strikes let's say a wooden post which is connected at the very bottom therefore, uh, therefore able to rotate it's hitting the, the beam at the very top and embedding itself in the beam. The question is if the beam was motionless at the time that the bullet hit the beam, what will be the beam's final angular velocity uh, as soon as after the bullet strikes the beam? And keeping in mind that of course gravity and all that may take a role, so let's just ignore gravity. Let's say that this is maybe a bird's eye view, this is a horizontal situation, so gravity is not involved at all. This is on a frictionless table and the bullet hits it what will be its final angular velocity, okay? The only way to solve it is to assume that lin or not linear but angular momentum is conserved so we can say that L initial is going to be L final. So what is the initial angular momentum? Well we have I uh, of the bullet so I'll, I'll use small b for bullet so small b I'll use big B for beam. Alright so I of the bullet times omega initial of the bullet plus I of the beam times omega initial of the beam is equal to and then assuming that they are embedded that the bullet is embedded so the angular the uh, moment of inertia will then combine so the moment of inertia of the bullet plus the moment of inertia of the beam times the combined final angular velocity and that is what we're looking for what is the angular final angular velocity of the beam and the bullet combined all right, first of all, since the beam was not moving, it will not have an initial angular momentum, so that goes to zero. Now, what we have to do here is find the initial, we find the moment of inertia of the bullet and the initial angular velocity. And again, assuming that when the bullet reaches the beam, it could be assumed to be traveling in a circular path of radius L, the length of the beam, and the angular velocity can be found by taking the tangential velocity at that moment and converting it using that radius. So again we know that the tangential velocity is equal to r times the angular velocity or the angular velocity is equal to the tangential velocity divided by the radius. In this case it would be the tangential velocity or the velocity of the bullet divided by the length of the beam because that would be the radius of the circular motion after the, after the bullet hits the beam. So there, that goes in here. Omega, well that goes in here for omega. I for the bullet would simply be mr squared because the whole mass of the bullet is at the distance r or l away from the point of rotation. So here we have the mass of the bullet m times the distance to the point of rotation l squared multiplied times the angular velocity which would be, would, would, would be the tangential velocity divided by the length right here and notice this L cancel that L so we have MLV or MRV however you want to look at it that's going to be the angular velocity of the bullet before the collision equals the moment of inertia of the bullet which is ML squared plus the moment of inertia of a beam rotating about its end a beam rotating about its end would be one-third M L squared so it would be one-third the mass of the beam times the length of the beam squared so that's the moment of inertia of the beam rotating about the end remember what it would be when it would be rotating about the middle then it would be one twelfth ml squared but in this case it would be one third ml squared plus the moment of inertia of the bullet multiplied times omega final so finally if we're looking for omega final we take the left side of the equation divided by that so then we can go up here we can say the final angular velocity is equal to the left side of the equation which is m l times the tangential velocity of the bullet divided by the sum of the moment of inertias which is m l squared plus one third big M for the mass of the beam times l squared. Okay now we're ready to plug in the numbers and find the final answer. Mass of the bullet 0 0.02 kilograms the length of the beam 2 meters the velocity of the bullet 300 meters per second. We divide that by the moment of inertia of the bullet which is 0.02 kilograms times the length of the beam which is, and my pen stopped writing here, 
two. Mm. So there we go, much better. So two meters squared plus one third the mass of the beam, which is five kilograms, times the length of the beam squared, two meters squared. And I think now we're ready. So 0 0.02 times two would be 0 0.04 times 300. The two zeros get rid of the decimal place. That would be four times three, which is 12 radians per second divided by, that's four times 0 0.02, that would be 0 0.08 plus, here we have five times four, which is 20 divided by three, which is 20 over three. All right, I think we're ready now to calculate this. So we have uh, the denominator would be 20 divided by three equals plus 0 0.08 equals and we take the inverse of that and multiply it times 12 and we get 1.78 radians per second. So this is equal to 1.78 radians per second. And that would be the angle of velocity of the beam after it's struck with the bullet. If the bullet lodges itself in the beam, the beam and the bullet then would be rotating at 1.78 radians per second. And that's how you do a problem like that.